So what brings you? Do you have you both have kind of a shared idea about what's happening? Yeah, yeah. we do. You want to start? Go ahead. Okay, so we're more or less at an impasse here um, because we love each other deeply and we love being in each other's company. Uh, we have a shared spiritual and uh, occupational purpose. Um, we are able to regulate each other really well. Uh, and we get each other on a deep level that I don't think either one of us can find elsewhere. Um, and yet we both trigger each other uh, on, a, on such a deep level um, in a committed space for me and for her, okay. a lack of a committed space creates more of a trigger for her. So we, we're, we're at a conflict uh, based on how our nervous systems are responding. It's not like we haven't worked on it, tried to figure it out. It's been seven years. Um, I got to the point where I had such deep anxiety, stomach issues, now autoimmune problems, bringing up past traumas in my body that uh, are not conscious, but I'm well aware that it's connected to regulation issues um, from, you know, cues that my nervous system is picking up from very early trauma um, in utero and as an infant, as well as other, other times. So um, it's really difficult for me to connect to what the boundaries are that I need. And the only way it seems I know how to do it well is to be sort of extreme based on wanting to stay connected, you know, like the, the, having the freedom to be who I am and connect with other people is what my nervous system is working well with at this point. And it's dysregulating Danielle. Um, and we've tried different versions of that. We've tried swinging. We've tried, you know, the idea of finding a third, you know, that, that works for both of us. Um, again, not for lack of trying, but, um, it, it's come to the point where I have so many issues coming up in my nervous system in the form of, uh, autoimmune issues in, in, in addition to the things that I've already struggled with having to do with nervous system regulation that I know it's a matter of, <laughs> my long-term health that I, that I take a step here in creating my own boundaries and freedom. Like I live in my own apartment now over the last year or so. Um, and that was a huge step for me and, and, and it was helpful. Yeah. Um, and it's been very difficult for Danielle and we're, we're trying to figure out a way that we can move forward together. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to process my issues to the degree where I can recommit and then live in the same space. I know she would, definitely benefit from that. I'm not in a place where I can, um, based on how I've responded. And I don't want to put her through uh, dysregulating her nervous system based on how she's struggling with not living in the same space. And uh, whenever I uh, connect with other women, it's, it's, it's pretty dysregulating for her. You, you, you are both, what is your shared story about being poly? Well, we're, we're pretty congruent there. We met both being Polly. Uh, we were both in marriages at the time. He was living separately from his wife and uh, on his way out. And I was still married and had no idea of divorce and um, tried it for around, met or friends, um, proceeded to fall in love with him when I didn't expect it. And uh, within six months of trying to be both with my husband and him, he had multiple partners. My husband was um, with other women. Um, I was the one that went to both of them and said, this was my reaction at the time. It was like, I need a divorce because I knew my husband wasn't going to slow down. Uh, we already tried for six or seven years and it wasn't, wasn't even in his, his, his trajectory. And with Mike, I said, I'm monogamous. And I was like, I think this is going to end it. But I had, to, I had to step into it. So he said, I know. And we've been monogamish the whole time. Um, but both of us brought a lot of baggage into the relationship. So Polly aside, um, we both have quite a history. We've done a lot of personal healing and we're both in the realms of working with others and helping them heal. So it, it's, it's been a long seven years. It's been a beautiful seven years. And we're just at this interesting cross. I don't want to say crossroads, but we're just, it's not sure what to do not sure what to do. And it's, it's difficult. We've been given advice to just 
cut it off. We've been given advice to try and figure out how to um, uh, compromise on both of our sides, um, you know, and, and, and which at least the advice we've been given so far has led to one or the other being dysregulated and it's compromise what is this in relation to other people and poly when you talk about compromise are you struggling over that well i i am and mike's i i struggle that's something i've struggled with for a very long time and i'm I'm in counseling, I've been in counseling with different poly coaches and poly therapists. And, uh, but for Mike at this point, um, you know, I, I just want to say like re our relationship aside also, there's a lot that you're going through as far as deep healing work that he's stepping into for the first time, going back to school. Um, and for him with the, some of the healing work that, he, that he's done, and please correct me, um, that he's, he's really feeling like it would be more regulating for his system. And he's really standing strong in that. Uh, that he, you know, and I, part of me is like, hooray, you know, I'm his biggest fan. And the, the other part of me is like, I don't know if I can go there. And he doesn't know if he wants to go there either. So it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like, we're at a place where we're, we're just, yeah. I, with, I, with other people, the compromising and the conflicts you're having is in relation to Polly. Is that accurate? What would you say about that? Well, um, it, it, it has been a major conflict point yes and um the bigger context for me has to do with healing from early developmental trauma issues uh as my life went on from that you know some of those earlier traumas during the early development um i found myself i'm the oldest of seven um i've been in a role of having to figure out how to take care of people around me and put my own needs aside and then I had kids shortly after I turned 19. So <laughs> um, it's been a long, long life of not really putting my own needs into the light and going, okay, what do I actually need? How do I regulate myself? What does that even mean in the context of, I'm so used to everyone needing me all the time and having an identity around that. And I'm learning to reshape my identity in a way where I actually include myself and in taking care of myself. Um, and it's been difficult for Danielle because she didn't meet me in a space where I was, you know, the term fawning, right? I fawn in all of my relationships and I would figure out a way to make it work, being the perfect partner, you know, um, and compromising myself all along the way. I don't make it obvious at this point. It's become an art form, um, <laughs> unconscious art form, weirdly enough. Um, and so Danielle didn't really see that. She saw me coming back into a space of, well, for the first time into a space of advocating for myself. So I've been a lot more direct about what I need. I'm practicing now. And she's created the safe space for that. And this is the tragic irony is that she creates so much safe space. I've healed so much being with her. Yet the direction that I find myself needing to go is triggering for her. Yeah. The direction um, you're needing to go is being in a separate apartment. What, what do you mean by the direction you're needing to go? pulling I, away from the connection here somehow. pulling away from uh the identity of fawning and doing everything i need to do to make the relationship okay it's hard for me to catch that i'm doing that so i need to create space to be in my own self and go what do i actually need without the context of someone else i need to look out for am i triggering them am i being a good partner it's been my whole identity my whole life identity and i need to figure out who I am outside of that. So it really is more about that than wanting to be with other people as the core issue for me. Okay. That's a part of it, but it's, yeah, it, it, it's me figuring it out. I need the space to figure it out rather than going into a context of the default being commitment and having rules that I didn't choose. <clears throat> uh, we have to fake out somehow how smart you both are. I fucking know. <laughs> it's so, it's, I hate it. <laughs> e e <laughs> I mean, I do the same thing in my own way. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'd like to know what you specifically mean by that. Uh, 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 <laughs> 
So make a, uh, I'm taking myself right now from uh, undergraduate work to uh, and, and graduate work to kindergarten. So uh, uh, okay, so <laughs> so make eye contact with each other right now. Right okay. now, yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Now, if I suggest something, you say to each other. The least important thing is to follow directions. What's more important is to check in with yourself, feel the words. You can shift them a little. Don't say them if it's not true. And try to be with yourself while paying attention to the other person. Okay. Okay. I will purposefully take some guesses that I know are incorrect, and you don't have to worry about any of that. But okay. I'm doing things on purpose intentionally. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> Mike might say, um, I need to take care of myself right now. Should I repeat it? Yeah. I need to take care of myself right now. Can and I that's... Just yeah. And just receive it until I suggest something. To, don't say anything un, until I suggest it. Mm -hmm. And and Mike says, um, it doesn't feel okay to take care of myself. It doesn't feel okay to take care of myself. My whole history, I wasn't allowed to do that. My whole history, I wasn't allowed to do that. I get negative feedback from you a lot when I take care of myself. I get negative feedback a lot from you when I take care of myself. And I know that's not your intention. And I know that's not your intention. And probably half the time I'm not even correct. <laughs> probably half the time I'm not even correct. But it's foreign to my system to love me first. But it's foreign to my system to love me first. The only way I know how to cope is by leaving you. The only way I know how to cope is by leaving you. I wish I knew how to stay here and have your amazing support and take care of myself. I wish I knew how to stay here and receive your amazing support and still take care of myself. I'm so sorry. It's the only way I know how to cope. I'm so sorry. It's the only way I know how to cope. You're totally open for a better version of me, aren't you? You're totally open for a better version of me, aren't you? Yeah. The only way I'm going to be able to do this and take care of myself is with your help. The only way I'm going to be able to do this and take care of myself is with your help. If I'm abandoning myself, I need you to sometimes see that. If I'm abandoning, if I'm abandoning myself, I need sometimes for you to see that. It would help me a lot. It would help me a lot. The only thing I have is that moment where I abandon myself and I don't know what to do with it. The only thing I have is that moment where I abandon myself and I don't know what to do with it. I get really scared when I do that. I get really scared when I do that. What's in your heart, Danielle, to tell him about all this? It's very slowly. I'm so sorry what happened to you. I'm so sorry for all the pain you've been through. I've been trying and doing my best and I feel sad that I haven't been able to help you in the ways that you needed it. 
I didn't know how to do. I didn't know how to do it. I am not sure how to do it, and I feel really sad about that. And I don't want you to abandon yourself ever. Yeah. So Danielle. So now Danielle says. I want you close to me. I want you close to me. And I want to help you take care of yourself. And I want to help you take care of yourself. And I'm going to mess up a lot. I'm going to mess up a lot. Because I'm going to blame you for making me feel bad. Because I'm going to blame you for making me feel bad. But then maybe I'll catch myself and come back to accepting you. Maybe I'll catch myself and come back to accepting you exactly as you are. Maybe we're both imperfect. Maybe we're both imperfect. Yeah. I want to plant myself right here and watch your journey. I want to plant myself right here and watch your journey. I want to stay right here, no matter how confused you are. I want to stay right here, no matter how confused you are. And I'm going to stay here for you, even when you need to get the hell away from me. <laughs> and I'm going to stay here for you, even when you want to get the hell away from me. I'll be here right when you get back. I'll be here right when you get back. Yeah. We bypassed all of the intelligence just now together, I think. Yeah. 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 It's okay. This this is the part that's confusing to know how to reveal when it's happening. But this is the part to reveal. So while you're on your individual journeys, you know, using different modalities to heal trauma and to heal your nervous systems, um, you can feel like awful and a wreck, but the relationship can be safe. The relationship is another entity that has its own journey. Right now, the relationship is entirely connected and safe. Yeah. Thank you. What's going on in your, in your, either of you? I'm blown away at how much I needed to say and hear all of those things you said. Yeah. Between us. I didn't know how much I needed to hear and say those things. Yeah. You're very brave to say them and repeat them and completely connect to your heart. That's what I love about him. That's what I love about him. How he can. Yeah. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. I struggle with figuring out any sort of strategy that has any value, it seems, when I connect to my heart. I just, I'm completely chaotic. I have no problem doing it. But I rarely say the right thing. And so I figure out what to say, it seems, or how to strategize when I'm disconnected from my heart. But I don't know if I ever would have figured out to say those things while connected. Yeah. It's like those two things haven't integrated at all, or at least in the ways that, that it felt like it was when yeah. I repeated what you were saying. That's amazing. Yeah.
I'm grateful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 so I'll ask again, like what, what questions come up for how to map this onto your choices now? Like, do you, do you like, I mean, this is you guys, I mean, I, 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 I usually would keep going, but like, like that was a completion. That was a repair that that's the entire point. There is actually not a point ever other than that. Y your repair time has been actually never. You, you don't have this conversation and then like get to it two days later and go like, oh, we completed that. Actually, it's been never, which is why you move out and get away. And yes. we, need, we need time and we need our nervous systems to heal. And it's like, actually, um, no, that's forever. You're informing your nervous systems that it's not safe here and you got to get away for an extended period of time. And that is actually not necessary at all to bond with each other. I didn't know that we weren't bonded. <laughs> to, 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 to come back in the way, like how's the safety com right now compared to 20 minutes ago? It's a different experience, right? Completely different experience. But I, I didn't even know that that was there to be found. Yeah. Viscerally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's, that's what to share and that's what to reveal uh, uh, the, so, so you're with your intelligence, you both have you, your, here's your intelligence right here. And here's a topic that you're talking about, about with your intelligence mixed together. Okay. So you start zooming out. So this is for you to take what I just helped you do and do yourselves. You start okay. zooming out. Now, what does zooming out mean? It means you're getting further and further away from the topic you're discussing. Okay. And further and further away from your intelligence. Okay. Dumber, 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 dumber. <laughs> Kindergarten. <laughs> Kindergarten. Yes. So what so what's it like now? If you're really confused, you go from kindergarten, you go one notch further, which is total humility about how you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. like i hurt i love you no idea how to put words to helping anything feel real right now mm. can't believe i was just arguing about that thing i don't even know what i'm upset about i don't even know if it's at you i think i might be in that thing i always do where i don't take care of myself when i need something because i think it's going to hurt your feelings I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sorry. I'm so scared right now. And then your partner goes, oh my God, I love you so much. Like, what do you want to do tonight? <laughs> We've been doing that last piece while avoiding the first part. Because <laughs> we didn't know how to do it. You mean get dumber in the most I'm, refreshing way. <laughs> I'm realizing that that's because we were so focused on our intelligence, maybe unknowingly. Yeah. That we. What the fight you're really having is you gave your peanut butter and jelly sandwich every day last week to me. You gave me half of it, and Monday came, and you gave your sandwich to someone else, and I don't want to be your friend anymore. You hurt me all the time and I make up things that prevent you from hurting me. And I think I hurt myself and I hurt you and I, I, I need to make a new best friend. I don't like you anymore. So that means that when, you're, when you have your intelligence here and the topic you're talking about, you're actually really only fighting about your bond not feeling safe. Mm. And that you can't reveal what's deep in there and be accepted mm. and get understood. It's too hard. Yeah. And it's hard to find. Like, I mean, Mike said it so eloquently. He's like, wow, I didn't even know how to find that. Yeah. 
that's yeah that's our coping strategies and we 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 often make them wrong we have to make our coping strategies known and reveal them and instead of acting out on them like acting out is i'm leaving take the keys i'm going that's acting on your coping strategy instead of i'm so scared right now that i want to get in my car and drive away and it's the only thing I know how to do to make myself feel better is to get away from you, but I'm not going to do that. Naming what you want to do is an incredible way to make your coping strategy more flexible. Hmm. So our coping strategies, the things we do when we get scared are rigid. All we need to do is make them more flexible to have new options. We don't have to fix it. We don't have to feel better. We just have to name what a mess we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like that. <laughs> Sorry. That just makes me laugh because yeah. it's so true. The, the mess part. <laughs> And if you recall a lot of our conversations recently, I've been trying to say that, but not very successfully. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I can. By the way, I'm I'm looking at the time, so I just want to let you know where I, I, I got, just. I got a at five forty. I'll get on. I have in ten minutes. I have a call. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. Do you have any questions? Uh, when can we set up another session? <laughs> <laughs> Just send an email over. My assistant's name is Monique. She'll she'll tell you all different ways to work with me. And um, yeah, yeah. And and the you know you know what's the, what's the goal of working with me? You you have these fear centers, which is called our limbic system, and it's currently afraid. To, to approach each other. That's not because you've done anything bad to each other. It's, it's, I mean, our whole history comes up all to this moment and we all know about how much work there is to do with our nervous systems, but sure. you can make it safe with your interactions, which ironically is the thing that will heal your individual lives more than anything else will. So, so you want to learn how to feel safe with each other to name your fears and then carry your fears together. Yeah. And that's a permanent change to the relationship that you will carry into all your relationships. Mm. Yeah. So you want to not work with me just like when you're in crisis, but like you want to solve that. Yeah, for sure. I, I, the, the, the clarity that I'm having and why I, I, ask that question is because I, I think I need more experiences like that, more patterning to, to, to recognize it in the moment and be able to come up with my own words. And, <laughs> and <laughs> I would like to figure out how to do that all the time, which I thought I was doing, but I don't think very successfully. Yeah. It's yeah. vulnerability and it, and it's, it's like, like, you know, like I, you know, I can do this here cause I'm not in the trigger that you two with you guys, you're in your triggers, you know, but I have to do this in my life and I actually have to be vulnerable. There's not like, Oh, I know how to do this thing. It's like, ah. mm -hmm. I have to get vulnerable and it's real that I have to risk and vulnerability technically means I'm placing myself in danger for a moment. Yes. So I got to open my heart. And what I mostly think is the person's not going to like me anymore if I show how sensitive I am. And they usually like me more. <laughs> <laughs> and some don't. And that's, I need to get away from those relationships, you know? Yeah. yeah that's true. Your care for each other is so tangible. It's like you'll, you know, you grasp this. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah, is a world record, kind of. He's like, geez. Oh, really? What do you mean? Okay, we, we, I need a little boost. Tell me what you mean. 
<laughs> you got you guys. I mean, you just like went right there. I mean, even though I didn't say a lot of things for Danielle to say, it was like because her heart was just like completely open to the whole experience and um, hearing everything. Mike was. I mean, you were just both right there. Yeah. So that's what we'll we'll do more of. So I don't like I don't give homework. Like we actually like you having this experience with the three of us retrained your mind how to do it because you know because everyone's uh everyone's a good communicator when they feel safe agreed that's why your words will be different but they'll they'll fit yeah Perfect. gotcha thank you thank, thank you, you so much, much.